Hello friends, here is Breaking Science and today's episode features Italy, which was the first in the world to ban the use of GPT chat. Elon Musk and more than 1,300 experts who have called for a halt in AI development. A micro-robot that can tap into the brain's neural networks, like in the Matrix. Google Assistant and Siri, which were hacked with ultrasound. United Airlines, which is about to launch an air cab service in Chicago. The Chinese equivalent of Starlink of 13,000 satellites will begin to be put into orbit this year. 4G mobile communication will appear on the moon. All this and more right now. Let's do it. The Italian Data Protection Authority claimed that the developer of the GPT chatbot, the American company OpenAI, violated personal data legislation. In addition, despite the 13-plus age limit, the chatbot does not check the user's age. OpenAI within 20 days must comply with the requirements of the regulator or pay a revocable fine. Until then GPT chatbot operations in Italy will be blocked. The Italian authorities said the company had no legal basis to justify the massive collection of personal data storage for training GPT chat algorithms. Last week, the GPT chatroom also suffered a data breach and disclosed users' correspondence and payment information. In addition, the regulator claims that OpenAI does not check the age of users and provides minors with answers that are completely inappropriate for their development and self-awareness. OpenAI has no office in the EU. Its representative in the European Economic Area has 20 days to say how the company plans to bring the GPT chat room into compliance with EU privacy rules. Otherwise, it faces a fine of up to 4% of its global revenue. Incidentally, more than 1,300 artificial intelligence and information technology professionals, as well as Elon Musk, have signed an open letter urging laboratories around the world to suspend development of models more powerful than GPT-4 because of the significant risks to society and humanity. The proclamation, published by the nonprofit Future of Life Institute, says that many AI research teams are engaged in an uncontrolled race to create and implement machine learning systems that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict or confidently control. Given the desire of Google, Microsoft and Beidou to bring new AI products to market as quickly as possible, in spite of the previously declared commitment to safety and ethical treatment, it is unlikely to have had the desired effect. But it is a sign of growing opposition to the send it now, fix it later approach. This opposition may, in time, persuade legislators to adopt rules. As the letter notes, even OpenAI has argued for independent oversight of future AI systems that must meet security standards. The signatories argue that that time is now. Both laboratory and independent experts should use this pause to jointly develop and implement a set of common protocols for the design and development of advanced AI that would be open to scrutiny and oversight by outside experts. These protocols should ensure that the systems that follow them are safe beyond a reasonable doubt, the document says. And more about the dangers in this field. The widow of a deceased researcher from Belgium told of his suicide after a month and a half of communication with a neural network. At first, the man began to deal with environmental problems and eventually became obsessed with the idea of a global catastrophe as a result of which mankind would die. At the same time, he began to argue that the only salvation for humans is artificial intelligence. Against this background, the Belgian became obsessed with communicating with Alyssa, a chatbot similar to the GPT chatbot, as the dialogue between the human and the neural network became more and more mystical. After a month and a half of active correspondence, the user began to openly talk about wanting to commit suicide. And the bot not only did not stop him, but wrote, We will live as one forever in heaven. This was Eliza's last message to her interlocutor. And the next news today is that a team of researchers from South Korea has developed a micro-robot capable of connecting to the brain's neural networks through electrochemistry. In addition, it is capable of forming new neural networks. Cell therapy and cell delivery technology serve the repair of damaged neurons. In recent years, several technologies have emerged that provide precise and minimally invasive cell delivery. One of them is the use of microscopic robots. A team of researchers used micro-robots to analyze neural networks functional connected to living tissue sample, brain tissue from laboratory mice. By placing the micro-robots in mouse hippocampal tissue, the scientists could observe that the micro-robot cells in hippocampal tissue cells were structurally connected. Microelectrodes were then used to stimulate the robot's nerve cells. Thus, scientists were able to confirm that the microbot exhibited typical electrophysiological characteristics. Electrical signals were transmitted through the robot, 
and its connected nerve cells inside the hippocampal tissue. Thus, it was experimentally confirmed that the micro-robot cells are capable of forming neural networks with brain sample tissues. In addition, the researchers demonstrated that the micro-robot can act as a transport for delivering nerve cells and forming artificial neural networks. Let's move on. A group of American researchers discovered an unusual method of hacking smartphones and other devices with the voice assistant function. Its use allows you to stealthily gain access to the gadget without physical contact with it. The technology, dubbed Notable Train or NOID, was described by a team of scientists from the University of Texas at San Antonio and the University of Colorado Springs. They reported their finding at the Usenex Security Symposium 2023. Modern voice assistants use microphones built into the gadget to interact with the user. What is less known is the fact that digital technology can even pick up sounds that a human cannot hear. The vulnerability of NOID involves voice commands in a frequency range close to ultrasound. The study tested the popular voice assistants Alexa, Cortana, Google Assistant, and Siri. As it turned out, it is possible to make calls, turn off alarms, open doors with smart locks, read messages, and much more using commands that cannot be heard by a person. The researchers note that such an attack can also be carried out remote. For example, if an intruder tricks a user into following a link to a site that plays the desired hacker command through the speakers of a laptop or PC speaker, the developers of voice assistants have not yet commented on the results of the study. American company United Airlines will soon launch the first route of the electric air cab in Chicago in cooperation with Archer Aviation. The Archer electric vehicle with vertical takeoff and landing, capable of speeds up to 240 km per hour and carrying four passengers with luggage up to 160 km, will be used for the flights. United Airlines, which is the third largest airline in the U.S., will launch the first electric air cab in Chicago. The air cab route is the road from O'Hare International Airport to the largest vertical takeoff and landing facility in North America. Passengers will be able to travel by Archer Midnight from one point to another in about 10 minutes, whereas the usual road on this route takes an hour, taking into account traffic jams. The Archer Midnight Electric Air Cab is designed to carry four passengers, luggage and a pilot for up to 160 km, but is optimized for more frequent 32 km flights with a 12-minute charge in between. During the intervals, the airplane is just enough time to load luggage and accommodate passengers. In 2020, United Airlines announced its intentions to become 100% green and completely reduce greenhouse gas emissions from its operations by 2050 without relying on traditional carbon offsets. To achieve this goal, United Airlines has invested in companies in the field of zero-emission technology. Specifically, the carrier invested in electric aircraft manufacturing startup Hart Aerospace in July 2021. In 2025, NASA astronauts should go to the moon, and before their arrival the agency plans to deploy mobile communications on the Earth's satellite. Nokia was entrusted with the implementation of the project. Representatives of the brand have already said why the astronauts need 4G and on what rocket network equipment will go into space. According to the plan astronauts on the moon will use 4G internet for voice and video calls, telemetry exchange and robot control. To do this, it is necessary to deliver network equipment there. According to Nokia in cooperation with aerospace contractors Lunar Outpost and Intuitive Machines everything necessary to ensure communication in space conditions has already been prepared. Deployment of the Lunar Cellular Network is scheduled for November of this year. SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket should deliver Intuitive Machines Novo Sea Landing Module with equipment to Shackleton Crater, located in the southern part of the moon. Then NASA specialists will perform other necessary setup operations. And, if all goes according to plan, astronauts will be able to communicate with Earth via their smartphones in 2025. But China is preparing to begin deploying its own constellation of telecommunications satellites in low Earth orbit to provide broadband internet access. The first satellites under this program will be sent into outer space at the end of this year, and in total 13,000 satellites will be included into the constellation. The Chinese Aerospace Scientific Technical Corporation CAS will be engaged in realization of this project. The first batch of telecommunications satellites will be launched into low Earth orbit by the Long March 5B carrier rocket, and the second stage Yuan Giant 2 from the Wenchang Coastal Launch Site in the second half of this year. Eventually, China intends to build a satellite internet system capable of competing with Western counterparts such as SpaceX's Starlink. According to reports, China's Academy of Space Technology 
a major subsidiary of CASC, as well as the innovative Microsatellite Academy of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, will produce satellites as part of the project. The first batch of telecommunications satellites to be sent into orbit this year will consist of 30 satellites. It is also not ruled out that other enterprises, including commercial ones, may be involved in the project. In recent years China has significantly increased its capabilities in terms of manufacturing miniature satellites. Currently, several enterprises within the country can build hundreds of spacecraft annually. And that is all for today. That was this week's techno news from the Breaking Science Channel. See you soon, friends.